we are back on another episode of L Sandler Pod, solo edition. Your boy JJ. Don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the membership. A. Eh? And today I got NXT for you. Seems like you guys really like that uh Monday Night Raw video. Hey, it was it was pretty raw. Like realistically, there was bro, there was no edit, no nothing. And the thumbnail was messing up. So yeah. Hey, but whatever, man. Hey, if you guys like it, we're going to keep it going. Mondays and Tuesdays, you got me. Fridays, you got Javi. Saturdays, or maybe Sunday. We haven't decided that yet. You're going to get both of us. But yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and start it off with NXT. Opening the show, you have Roxanne Perez. She got betra- She ended up cutting a promo. Very nice promo. I mean, like, she is great in the ring has some personality she still has to work on the um her heel persona a little bit because uh she's just like realistically she's just too nice like she's just adorable like (laughs) that's the proper word for it but but anyways um so then look she was talking about Laura Valkyria, how they had a banger of a match, and then she ended up winning the, the title and then rubbing it in the face of the crowd and rubbing in the face of Laura Valkyria, which, by the way, she came out with a um, with the little arm holder because apparently her arm is messed up. I forgot the name. Sorry, I apologize. But anyways, man, um, so Laura Valkyria was t- cutting a promo saying like, oh, what, are you not good enough? for NXT anymore, saying it to Roxanne Perez, and then you had the goth chick, excuse that car, Uh, you have the goth chick, which I don't know her name, I can't remember, but anyways, the one that has like an obsession over Laura Valkyria, comes out and actually betrays Laura Valkyria, and then after that, for some apparent reason, you have Natalia come out. Oh, wait, no, I know why. Because on Monday Night Raw, she said that she was going to come out and challenge Roxanne Perez for the NXT title. So, yeah, so you had that, that setup. It was quite something. To open the show, I don't think they should have opened up the show with that. They should have opened up the show with something else, honestly. But, hey, it's whatever. Moving on. Anyways, uh, moving on. You had the debut of LeBron. Evans and he had a match with against Scripps. And if you don't know, Scripps is the dude that used to do the flippity flop from Circus Soleil, the guy that, that had a crush with with uh Nikki. Uh, uh, what's her name? Oh my god, I just forgot her name. I was about to say Nikita Lyons, but it's not uh Nia Jax. There we go, man, my bad. Uh, but anyways, um, so amazing match, amazing match on LeBron Evans' part. Because realistically, like, the dude is super new. The, the the kid is 19 years old. My wife called him the Miles Morales of NXT. But realistically, that's a pretty good example of what the what the kid is like. He is super young. He is athletic. He ha- he can the freaking he literally looks like he is pausing in the air whenever he's jumping which is nuts. And we thought that uh, Ricochet was really good in, in like as a high flyer and all that stuff. But man, this kid is to like the next level. Um, he, he, he has something. He has something. He has the in-ring. For being 19 years old, he has the in-ring. And then on top of that, he, he, is pre- he has pretty good timing and all that stuff. The only thing that he needs to do is clean up uh, just pretty much grow up realistically um but what can you expect he's 19 you cannot expect him to be a grown-ass man you know what i mean at that point 19 years old i was doing stupid shit too but i'm not saying that he does stupid shit but you can tell the vibe like he's just he's just a kid like realistically he's just a kid but hey he has a very bright future ahead of him and he's gonna do good and it was a good thing that these they paired him up with scripts Mainly because they both complement each other in terms of their styles. They're both high flyers and things like that. You get a lot of flippity flops. But the fact is that Evans did amazing, man. Um, He ended up having like this pretty much kind of like how Cody does the Cody Cutter. But to like the 20th level. The man literally jumped up and he got above the third turnbuckle. And looked like he paused in the air and caught him with the with the cutter, which was crazy. But anyways, that wasn't even his finisher move. It was like a signature move. 
Uh, his finisher move is something else. You got to watch it. Just go to WWE to, to the YouTube channel and then check it out. Um, anyways, um, next thing, real quick. Um, what's his name? Rich Holland came out saying that he wanted to apologize to... Uh, to um, to um, I forgot his name. Anyways, uh, it, this this segment doesn't matter. I just wanted to talk about it because the guys from LWO need to get some freaking um, uh, some acting classes. Like realistically, like they are terrible at acting. Like I can probably cut a better promo and act better than freaking both of them combined. It's just like it feels like so robotic. Like they look like they belong in a Tubi movie, bro. In a 2B movie, my guy, like, come on, man. Like, like, get your acting together. Like, you can literally go to an acting class. They're not that, they're not that expensive. Like, bro, just do something. Like, because right now, this is ridiculous. But anyways, man, uh, you had the Roxanne, you had Roxanne Perez versus Natalie. It was a pretty good match. I personally didn't think that she needed to have this match against Rock, uh, uh, against Natalie. Mainly because Natalie is is mainly used as a like like the the line. She's she's the line. Like if you if you can beat me or if you do good against me, then hey, that means that you're proving yourself. And realistically, Roxanne Perez has done enough to prove herself. I don't think this match should have was needed, especially for Roxanne. Um, anyways, Roxanne Perez ended up winning. Um, because Lola Vice got involved and then pulled Natalie and she, and Natalie ended up losing that way because of, uh, distraction or whatever. Uh, moving on, the Wolf Dogs are probably going to get drafted together to start off. And then after that, they're probably going to break up. So Baron Corbin and Brown Breaker are gold together. And I think that if they put them together, I think it will be great 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 for the tag team division for where it wherever they go if it's going to be raw or smack them but they're definitely getting called up to the main roster because they're great uh lola lola vice got her ass whooped by natalie and uh lola vice needs to stop pulling her punches so much like i understand that you're green but bro like you don't have to pull your punches that much and she has that mma background like she should be like it should be looking much real and maybe she's just because she's green, she's scared of, like, because of the MMA background on, like, realistically injuring somebody. somebody, And that's totally understandable. But still, like, that's the only thing that she, that when it, once she does that, she will be good. Because she already got the looks for it. She already got the looks for it. And she can cut a per, pretty decent promo. Um, it's good for the women's division. So then after that, Ava Rain ended up. Shut Ava Rain? No, I'm fucking playing. That's, that's the rock star. Anyways, um, she ended up showing off the new women's North American champion. Looks pretty clean. It's pretty exciting. It's pretty great, honestly, for the uh, for the NXT division. They should have that in the main roster. They should have like a like a like a mid card women's belt. They have a bunch of mid card men's belt. Why can't they have one for the women's? Like I think I think it's needed, but. Maybe it might just be me that is, like, uh, wanting another belt. Like, I, I don't know. It might just be me. But anyways, uh, Oba Femi ended up coming out, cutting a promo. <sighs> the dude is great, man. He is 25 years old. Young dude. He got that dad swag. He can cut it. He can cut a promo even with the Nigerian accent, which is great. Uh, obviously, he's from the homeland, from Nigeria. And it's great the fact that... They are not, like, I guess, like, they're not holding him back from him cutting a promo. And the fact is that the, the dude was just in college a couple years ago, bro. Like, he is, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Uh, I'm looking for it. I'm looking. He's a former shot putter, putter for Alabama. One of the biggest colleges in the United States, bro. And then went into wrestling from nothing. Like, I'm sure he got to have some wrestling background here and there somewhere. But in college, he didn't even do it, uh, which is very impressive. Um, after that, Ivar interrupted him and he came out. And then Ivar, bro, my man was wearing skinny jeans. He actually looked normal. I was very impressed because usually he looks like he belongs in the Renaissance Fair. 
Um, I don't have Javi to laugh at my jokes anymore, so it's like a bunch of crickets and the fam just going off. But anyways, um, after that, Ivar. So you're going to have Ivar versus Obafemi for the title, potentially, which is good. Um, they're going to have a, a in-show pay-per-view pay-per-view because it's going to be uh on the nxt show for two weeks so it's going to be good i'm pretty sure it's going to be that it's going to be in the next two weeks so they're going to have that um after that you had jada parker versus brinkley reese they're both green as fuck excuse my language because i'm trying not to curse i'm trying i'm watching it i'm watching it guys but they're both super green Super green. Jada Parker got the looks. Like, realistically, I, I saw her. I was like, damn it. Let me not go into too much details because I'll get in trouble. Uh, I'm a house. By my wife. So, yeah. But anyways, she can be something. I just, she just obviously has to do something with in the ring part. In the ring, she is green. Same thing as the other girl. They're both very green, and that's perfectly fine. Um, she has the persona for a heel, which is good. Because there's not that many uh, women in the women's roster that are good as heels. Besides, like, Charlotte. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be the biggest one in there. And Rhea Ripley, if you want to call her a heel. But I don't think she's a heel. She's more like a tweener, like a Randy or type. But uh, anyways, um... Moving on to Lola Vice ended up cutting a promo backstage. And then you're going to have Lola Vice versus Sol, Sol Ruka next week. Um, which is probably going to be a really good match, honestly. Sol Ruka is pretty good. Uh, she just can't cut a promo for to save her life. I and mean, that's fine. That's the point of NXT. Like, just to learn. And then, um, pretty much, this is like a school. But you're going to pay for it. I wish I could go to one of those. That would be dope. <laughs> Um, then you had the rematch from Saturday, uh, NXT stand and deliver. You had the Wolf Dogs versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier for the champions. But there was a stipulation. If Nathan Frazier and Axiom will lose, then that means the team will have to break up. And they went at it, bro. Like the match live, whenever we went to watch it, it was, I personally think it was the best match of the night. And it was crazy good. And believe it or not, on NXT they top the, on NXT today they ended up topping off that match. That sounded wrong. Pause. They ended up doing that match much better compared to what we saw on Stand and Deliver. So if on Stand and Deliver we ended up getting a, 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 a five out of five match by New Japan Scoop Scoop, um, we ended up getting tonight on NXT we ended up getting a six out of five. Like, it was really good, and that's honestly the one match that I would say check out. And the uh, LeVon Evans match, check them out, both of them, because they were really, really good matches. You will be very impressed with what they did. Brown Breaker, uh, Baron Corbin, they look great. Uh, Nathan Fraser in action look great. You can't. They're, they're, honestly, they're like white rice and beans. Like, it just goes together so well. Shout out to my Puerto Ricans. And Spanish people, but I mean, <laughs> um, but then you ended up having Axiom and Nathan Fraser actually winning the belt. So what that means is that Brown Breaker and Baron Corbin are definitely, for sure, getting called out to the main roster, which is awesome for them. Um, the celebration lasted a very, very short amount because then the uh, these bums that ended up losing on Saturday. Uh, the final statement ended up coming out and ruined the party and ended up destroying Axiom and Nathan Fraser. And, and they were holding the belt, even though they didn't win. But my guess is that they're going to be in NXT, which is good. They need to stay away from the main roster because those guys are just. They, 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 they got it for NXT, but they don't got it for the main roster. And that's completely fine. Like, honestly, like you have three different shows and. And, hey, they're going to be kind of like the, the line, like how Natalie is. They're probably going to be the line in NXT, you know what I mean? Which is good. Uh, good for them. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to roast them. I promise. I'm not going to roast them. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to carry and cross, please. I'm 
I'm so close to roasting you, but I'm gonna be nice. Um, anyways, then to to finish it off, to finish it off, you had Trick Williams come out, and then the stadium or the little arena, whatever you wanna call it, the performance center ended up going crazy with whoop the trick. Yo, the song is so fire, bro. It's just a beat. But it's so catchy, man. The, whoop, that trick. The dude, honestly, like we said it in a previous video, the dude has it. He has it. He has the charisma. He has the looks. He has the mic skills, which is something that not that many people have. That's the one thing that a lot of wrestlers miss is the mic skills. You know what I mean? And some of them just miss both, like Karrion Cross, realistically. But <laughs> I still did it. Mama Roots. But anyways, um, yeah, Trick Williams is going to be a star. He is a star in the making. All he needs to do is get better in the ring. But he is doing it little by little, and he will. With more, more repetition, more experience and things like that, he will be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, he is going to be a star. He ended up calling out. The NXT champion, Ilya Dragunov, and challenged him. And Ilya at first said no. But then he said, you know what? I will give you the match in two weeks in the NXT spring breaking. Weirdest name ever. But anyways, I will give you the match. However, however, if you lose Trick Williams, you have to leave NXT and not come back. Which... I got hyped because it may mean that he's getting called up to the main roster. Or it may mean that Ilya Dragunov will be getting called up to the main roster. I don't think that they're going to put him... I don't think they're going to throw Trick into the fire that quick. I think he deserves to win the, the title belt. My prediction will be is that he wins the title and that he gets called up later. But realistically... Whenever you really think about it, the man is so on fire that he is also known by the the, the crowd in the in the main roster. Whenever he popped up in that SmackDown episode a couple of months back, the crowd was yelling, whoop that trick. Literally. So like, come on, you don't get that that much with a lot of NXT dudes. And that's awesome. Like, that's awesome that he was able to do that. Um, but anyway, so then you're going to have an NXT spring breaking. Ilya Dragunov versus Trick Williams for the NXT belt. And then if Trick loses, he has to leave NXT, which, aka, getting called up. Um, now, but whenever it was, everything was said and done, Carmelo Hayes ended up put, uh, hitting Trick in the back. And then it, it created a domino effect. And then uh, Trick ended up hitting Ilya in the back. And Ilya was faking it off and all that stuff. And then, anyways, uh, Carmelo Hayes kept hitting Trick Williams. And then he yelled at him. He said, hey, we ain't done. And we're going to fi finish it next, next week in a steel cage match. So then you're going to have Carmelo versus Trick Williams in a steel cage match next week, which is going to be a fire match. Anyways, NXT was very entertaining, especially for having a lot of people that are new i did leave some stuff out because realistically like i'm not gonna go ahead and sit up and talk about like a bunch of people that you guys don't know and some of them they deserve it some of them don't so pretty much everybody that i told you is the people that i personally think that have something there is a couple of girls um in the nxt roster that are gonna that have something also but i was running at the time um uh what's her name uh, Felon Hanley, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I think that's her name. She is gonna be something. She's gonna be good, honestly. Um, if she can if she can just get the get the hang of cutting a promo. She's she's gold. Uh, Kiana James, she's gonna be something too. Um, and uh, the the other two girls are very green, but they got the looks. You know what I mean? They got the looks. They 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 can be something, but honestly, mainly probably gonna be like a like a B-roll type, and which there's nothing wrong with that. You need that in wrestling. You always need that. You cannot, not everybody needs to be a star. You know what I mean? You cannot just have the Avengers. 
every single time. Like, you know, like you need people to build other people and things like that to have stories and create stories and then have rivalries. That's the fun thing about wrestling. But anyways, NXT was fun. It was fun to watch. So far, this week has been great in terms of wrestling entertainment. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait for Friday. Let's find out what's going to happen on Friday. Bailey's going to come out and Cody Rhodes is going to come out. Um, and one last thing. Thank you, Roman. We always will acknowledge the tribal chief. Hey, and he's back at the lab already. Getting better. Deuces.